Big fin soon. All right. Hi, everyone. It is Thursday. Yes, Thursday, uh, June 6th at 6.30 p.m. And this is a meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee of the Town Council. Um, we This is not our normal meeting. We are continuing and finalizing, hopefully, um, our uh, process for making appointment recommendations to the 2024 Charter Review Committee. So I'm going to call on members of the committee just to make sure they can hear me and I can hear them um, and you can hear them too. And we can all hear each other. I think that covers it. Uh, Pat DeAngelis. Present. Councilor Ryan. I'm present. Lynn Griesmer. Present. Councilor Ette. Present. All right. Thank you. Uh, we did post public comment for this meeting. If anyone would like to make public comment for up to three minutes, uh, who's in the attendees, you can go ahead and raise your hand and I can bring you into the room. Okay, seeing none, we are going to move on to our main event today, which is discussing uh, our recommendations for appointments to the 2024 Charter Review Committee. So we're going to start with deliberation and uh, conversation before we go into our recommendations. Um, and I would like to uh, call folks' attention to the selection guidance, as well as any notes that you might have taken during the interviews as we go through this process. Um, I don't necessarily have any prompts to start us off, but would anyone like to share any thoughts that they have to, to kind of start our discussion off around this topic? Anything anyone would like to say? I'm gonna pull up the selection guidance and I'll put it on the screen for us if that would be helpful, just to remind us. Okay, give me one second. People can vamp in the, in the intermediary if you'd like to. Okay, I'm gonna start and say, as I'm pulling this up, um, I do wanna thank folks for, um, all of the work that we uh, that you all did to get people engaged in this and uh, pull people into the process, it was really great to hear the um, the passion that people have and and I want to thank everyone who did submit their name and put in an SOI for this. Uh, this is a great way to serve the town and uh, and a really important way to serve the town. Um, and so I just want to first extend gratitude as we get going um, for folks who put themselves out there and, and engaged in this process. All right, I'm going to share um, All right, so as a reminder, this is the charge for the Charter Review Committee. And this is the selection guidance that we set. So as we consider our candidates, we are supposed to be benchmarking them against this selection guidance. Any questions or comments? No, um, I have a comment. It's interesting because I purposely didn't look at this. I just started to think about what felt interesting and important to me. Uh, and I came up pretty much with the same category. So that's interesting to me. Thank you. Councilor Ate? I think um, I'll echo what's Pat had said, and um, like, and I would like to appreciate everyone who came for the interviews and the answers that they gave. They were really thoughtful. I um, sprained my hand writing down notes from what was um, <laughs> said. And to return to Pat, what that may mean is that even if everyone is qualified, that they are other considerations in place to come up with who will end up on um, this or within this group. And so that someone doesn't end up isn't to say they're not qualified, but it might be that based on um, the selection and those considerations, they um, weren't part of the, the court. But again, I'd like to appreciate, again, um, counselors who were able to push out um, requests and for those members of the community who came around for the interviews. 
I agree. Thank you. So the way that this process is going to work is we have nine slots um, on the on the committee. And um, I'm going to be asking each of you to share who you would like to see appointed. Um, we're going to start out with this not in any particular order. Uh, this is really, truly, um, again, not we're not going to do ranked choice voting at this point. Uh, it hasn't gotten through the state house yet, so we, you know, we're not going to do it yet. But um, our, you do not need to say nine names if you do not have nine individuals who you believe should be appointed. Um, is there anything that I'm missing as my disclaimer, Pat? I, yeah, just quickly, um, I feel like there is, I, I, in some configurations of how I'm deciding on my own, I have more than nine, so who do I, you know, um, and, and then there are other times I think, well, let me, let me do my core and then see what other people are doing. So, um, I'm not sure I'm ready to list all nine, but okay, I can, well, okay. but I, anyway. So. Um, does anyone have, Pat, do you have any questions for the group or anything that you'd like to bring up for discussion to kind of get it down to nine? Uh, what would be helpful to hear from the group? Hmm. Uh, I guess what was what felt most important to you, like if you had to pick a single element, uh, what felt most important to you to look at? And uh, also, is there anything that that uh, left you feeling, oh, I'm really not sure about this candidate because of uh, this particular thing? So instead of talking about them all right away, but what what became most important to you through the interview process? Lynn? I was very interested in whether people were coming in with um, a willingness to listen and an openness to hearing other people's ideas. That was number one. I was also taken by whether or not in talking about how they would go about the business of the committee, their recognition of the need to consult a lot of outside residents and engage in discussion with the community. Those were really two incredibly important criteria for me. Thank you. Pat, I, I'll, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I, I can go last. Uh, for me, something that I was thinking about was the variety in ways that people have engaged with the impacts of the charter, if not the charter itself. So um, for me, I was looking at, you know, some folks who have been on committees, some folks who haven't, some folks who've been active in groups that have worked, that aren't committees that have worked with council, um, some groups that haven't, you know, I think for me, it was really important to not have the exact same, I guess I'm in my head, I'm calling it like engagement profile, right? Mm -hmm. So not every single person who has served on two committees that are regulatory and has done this. Um, that was just a random one. I don't think anyone fits that profile. But for me, that was, as I kind of considered the comp composition of it, um, that was the, the top selection criteria for me was really about how they've, um, been impacted by and engaged with the the charter um, or the impacts of the charter, if that makes sense. Anyone else have thoughts on what they were looking at? Councilor Ryan? I'm not sure how important this is to this process, but I was also looking at just the, the uh, spread of candidates through the town. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have two districts that only have one representative in each, and then we have three districts that have a much larger representation. And one of the things that I uh, was looking for, hoping for, was a, a kind of breadth of just geographic spread um, that wouldn't be dominated by one district or another, or that that some districts wouldn't have have anyone on on the on the body. On the other hand, there are other factors that have to be considered, but that. That was one. Um, the other is a tougher one. I, I really have gone back and forth. Um, some candidates have been actually very involved in the uh, 
uh, charter review process already. And that's a really good thing. Um, but I guess in my mind, when I thought about this, I kind of like to have 12, if you wish, ordinary citizens um, reaching out and talking to groups like the League of Women Voters and others um, and getting input, but um, having a sort of uh, fresh and open mind. On the other hand, the fact that individuals have gone out and done uh, some of the preliminary work already is actually a credit to them. So um, kind of torn there. Um, but I think in my own mind, originally, at least I had envisioned, and I think we have uh, an excellent group. Uh, I have no problem with any of them, uh, mm -hmm. but it's trying to put nine people together that right. Um, right. that will work best. So those are two thoughts I'm having. Um, geographic spread and to what degree does uh, prior involvement in this issue and advocacy um, suggest perhaps that that it's better that you stay in that field rather than be on this body. Councillor Ate? What I had in mind was if I were the leader of, or I was going to select a group of Avengers, how would I get this group <laughs> together? Um, and 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 so I I was also looking at a mix. I didn't um, focus on geography. I don't think my geography, the geographical knowledge of the town is that great. So I was looking at age, length of time here in Amherst, Amherst. So a mix, those who are locals, those who are coming from other um, places, um, gender and a few uh, other things. Those who have a lot of knowledge of the political process and those who don't as well. And so it, it, it was a melange I could say, uh, and I think it will be fascinating listening to the discussion as we go on, what different criteria we used to come up with our list. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. One of the things that I focused on um, was the work plans, the ideas that uh, what might be important to look at. And I thought there was a real range and everything from very specific to more open-ended and that, but I was very interested in that. Um, I was interested in diversity. Um, and so I was looking at that both, uh, you know, in terms of the kinds of jobs we have and on, or the kind of uh, work experience people have had. And um, I think the other thing that was important to me was uh, was there an emphasis on outreach? Uh, because I think, you know, that's pretty critical. So that's kind of where I was coming from. Yeah, and I think, Pat, to, to build on that for me, it was also um, something that I found really interesting was there was commentary from, I think, everyone uh, in one way or another on who this work is is here to serve. And I think that was very interesting as well to hear, you know, folks naming the different populations that are impacted and how to how to work with those different groups. Um and and the and the either nuanced or obvious ways that they're impacted differently. Uh for example, you know, we as town councilors are impacted by the charter in, in different ways, engage with the charter in different ways than um residents who aren't involved in any way than, you know, residents who only live here for the academic year, then all of that. Um, and I think it was interesting to me how folks see the charter as serving those different populations or identities, I guess is a better word. Anyone else? Okay. Um, do folks want a minute to think and then we can share our, our thoughts? I'm assuming that that's a yes, but I'm not sure. Okay, I'm gonna give you, let's take Take a minute, jot down some notes, come back. You can turn your camera off if you want. I will yell at you in a moment to come back. I'm just gonna do my quick Google sheet making. So you guys go and uh, so I can tally. Take your minute, write down your thoughts. I'll call you back.
folks can start to come back. And is anyone voluntarily interested in going first? If not, I will I will draw randomly. Why don't you start? Because I have to keep tabs and I I, I can't do that. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we're gonna wait till Councillor Ryan has his video back on. Okay. Um I'm doing random draw. All right, randomly drawing. Okay, the random number generator says one, two, three, four. Counselor Ate, you are up first. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am truly doing a random number thing. Yeah. <laughs> I can screen share if you don't believe me. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> All right, just listing names. It's not a rank order, but uh, listing the names. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the random draw. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Andy Churchill, Julian Hines, Ben Kubiak, Meg Gage. Hang on, go slower. Sorry. Okay. Andy Churchill. Yep. Julian Hines. Yep. Bernard Kubiak. Yep. Raphael Rogers. Yep. Meg Gage. Yep. Ken LeBlanc. Yep. Erica Mil Milton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Next up on the random generator. That's seven names. It's seven, yes. Okay. Um, Lynn. Uh, I have nine, although I kind of was hard getting there for the ninth. Okay. So uh, in alphabetic order, Andy Churchill, yep. Meg Gage, yep. uh, Jillian Hines, mm -hmm. Bernie Kubiak, Ken LeBlond, Erica Mil Michelin, I guess mm -hmm. it is. Michelin. Yeah. Dan Muscat. Raphael Rogers, Marcus Smith. Okay. Um, George? So my uh, is in order as well in terms of alphabet. Um, I did choose nine. Um, okay. Churchill. Yep. Gage. Kubiak. Yep. yep. LeBlanc, LeBlanc. Yep. Major. Uh, hang on. Michelin. Yep, yep. Let's get Rogers Smith. Okay. And Pat? If I did Churchill, Michelin, yep. Kubiak, Rogers, Hines, Muscat, LeBlond, and Mager. Mayor. Major, it's pronounced major. Major, major. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I and have... um, oh, oh sorry, no, no. then I'm stuck. So I think Meg Gage. Okay, Gage. Okay, um, and I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got to nine. Okay, um, I had Churchill, Dumont, Kubiak. Hines, Rogers, Michelin, Mid Mid how do we say it? Michelin. Michelin, thank you. Uh, LeBlond, Gage, and Smith. So I'm gonna tally here, hang on one second. Six, nine, one, go. I think we did. I think we pulled it off. 
have you gotten nine without me needing to? All right, I'm gonna um, share my screen so people can check my math and please check your uh, votes when I do. Hang on, I'm just highlighting what if I think I did it right. One moment. Come on, computer, you can do it. All right. All right, please check your votes. Did you make it a Thank tad you. bigger? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. You know, it's me. What can I say? Whoa, sorry. Too much, too much. <laughs> Does that work? Yes. Thank you. I'll highlight on the side too, so you can see. So candidates with five, four, and three votes, I believe, are the top vote getters, and there are nine of them, if I'm doing my math right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, uh, Councilor Messier? Is it possible to have those that are five, which would mean everyone already on the committee um, approves of them? Could we have them in some particular color so that we could then look at those who aren't? Yes. Thank you. I am not anticipating that we are going to go back and do multiple rounds. I did say we're not going to do ranked choice voting. Um, but yes, hang on one second. But we are going to discuss reasons for supporting. Sure, sure, sure. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I do, I, I mean, I if and if people want to go back, we can. I think it's just going to get confusing. Um, but if people feel strongly, we can do that. Hang on, I'm doing a whole color code. I know. I think it would be helpful as we talk about people that didn't hit five. Mm -hmm. To be able to see them. Yep, I, I could you I put them up again because I hang on. I just didn't want people to see me clicking around, so I I'm going to put it up again. I just was um making it all colorful. One moment. <laughs> okay, thank you, honey. <laughs> Don't use Excel. This is like wild times. I use Google Sheets always. All right, pulling it up for you. Just make putting it in order for you too. The most Lana, am I right that you did eight? Um, six, seven, eight. Yep. No, I did nine. Okay, I'm. I'm. My chart's not matching yours then. Oh, I'll show you. Yeah. You. All right, this is where we are. Share in that. Okay. Yeah, I did nine. Yeah, that was missing. All right, Councilor Ryan. If you're ready to discuss this list, I'm ready to make a pitch for someone, but I want to make sure that you're ready for that. I am ready to discuss this list. I think that's the next step. Good. Okay. Um, so I'm prepared to. So we have, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six individuals we all agree on. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to go through them. Um, I want to talk about Dan Muscat. Um, I was impressed on a number of levels. Um, I think he brings a very different perspective than, than a lot of folks in Amherst. Um, he's a contractor. He's self-employed. Um, he's not been active in the town a lot because he's been busy making a living, but his kids were raised here. He's lived here for 26 years. He talked about wanting to give back to the town. Um, he's served on the reparations committee at JCA. Um, likes the idea of something more in person, more personal interactions. I found his description of his work as a uh, 
a couples therapist, uh, quite uh, <laughs> made a lot of sense. Um, so I was impressed by him, and I would like to make a case for him. Um, and uh, I understand the desire to, for youth, but I have concern about putting someone who's going to be a first-year college student on this body. We had a um, uh, very uh, painful experience the last time we did this with um, the uh, redistricting committee. Um, I was all gung-ho for youth and for getting, in this case, well, it was college students. Uh, and we put two on the body and they, they both disappeared. Um, and I think I'm a little concerned. Uh, Julian is someone who clearly is committed and engaged and um, I don't doubt for a moment his sincerity, but um, my concern is that it's his first year of college um, and he should be allowed to enjoy that and experience that without having, uh, there are going to be a fair number of meetings, a fair amount of demands, reports, um, and so I have concern about that. So I realize four of you have chosen him and I may be in the minority here, but I have a concern about that because of his, uh, he's just starting college. Um, and our experience in the past with college students on bodies like this. And I'd like to make a strong case for Dan Muskett. And George, to be clear, by this count, Dan is in the, would be a recommendation. Uh, I would certainly, I would like us to have five for Dan. I think two people haven't voted one way or the other. So I guess I'm making an appeal to you and to Freke. Um, I voted nine, but there's okay. nine. Spots. I, I'm just saying on, as per these votes, just so you know, yes, these nine people would be the composition of the committee. Uh, okay. Uh, so then maybe we don't. Yeah. Okay. Does that? Am I right? Is that well, it depends on how people decide. When people can change their votes, um, absolutely. I'm, I'm trying people to convince people to consider changing their vote on Julian. Um, I, okay. I may, and I'm trying to urge others to consider voting for Dan, or okay. just not saying anything. And um, I'll shut up. Okay. No, I just wanted to make sure you knew that you didn't have to persuade. Anyway, yes. Okay. Uh, Pat. Yeah, I want to say that I, I, without being repetitive, I uh, felt the same about Dan Muscat for the reasons that George shared. Um, and it'd be interesting to have a, a working class person uh, involved in all of this. Um, the other thing, I, I've, I didn't think about Julian in the way that George did. I've known him since he was 13 and he's totally focused on government. Um, so I'm not, I don't know. I have to think about what George said because I think it was important. Councilor Atte. So I'm a strong yes for that. Uh, I somehow must have skipped him. I have interacted with him and what he displayed during the interview is consistent with my interaction with him. Would you like to add a vote in here for- on Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, I raised my hand. One, Pat, I, I hear what you're saying and I wanna just kind of gently offer the suggestion that we don't know if there are or are not other working class folks um, on this. That's true. As well. That's true. Um, and so I just want to na name that. But then two, um, I think that we, it is so important that we not, um, not make assumptions about an entire group based on one person. And I think for the instance of Julian, um, you know, I think I included him on my vote because I, one, we've seen his track record. Two, we have to trust people when they say they can do it. And three, the districting advisory board had way more people drop than just college students. So I think to be fair, we run that risk with any committee that we appoint. And we're lucky that we have a bench that we can go back to and ask folks to reapply if someone drops. But I don't think that it's fair to, to base someone's actions based on the fact that they are or not a student. Um, and so I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want, that is not uh, an application or a factor in my mind other than a positive possible perspective, um, which is a, a lot of alliteration for me today. Uh, I think, you know, to the the vote that I gave um, Darcy, and I, I'm not going to convince enough people, I think, of this, but I, I did think that the perspective of someone who served on the council would be an important one to have. And so I just wanted to explain that vote there as um, someone, again, when we talk about how people have experienced the charter, 
Um, I think that is uh, a perspective that we didn't get from anyone else. And so um, I hope that the people who are on this committee will speak to current and former counselors to hear their perspective. And that was mentioned by several folks, but um, I wanted to explain that vote down there. Um, I think that the the people, the reason why the people I voted for got my vote, one was not because of things that were lacking from other members. And I, I assume that that's true for all of us. We vote kind of in the affirmative for people who have what we're looking for. Uh, and the, the group of people that I, in my head, put together, um, represented by my votes, has a variety of experiences across committee work, um, professional work, and I think that they're all bringing a sense of um, curiosity to this process, a sense of wanting to explore and learn, and um, not necessarily coming in with a list of things that they're going to just plow forward with and ignore what other people have to say. Um, any other hands on this? Councilor Ate? I think I had I hadn't thought about the possibility of time given. So we we had interviews where we didn't get to have a back and forth. And one of the questions I would have asked, especially with um, Julian, would be how he would handle time. Um, and and so George raising it is something that is important. I don't think it's enough to change my vote, but it is something that I um, at least now can reflect more on. It is challenging to get some of this work done. There's no denying that. And if that's the case, we would want people who are able to handle the work with other things that they have going on. Lynn? One of the things I would like to point out is that the group uh, exhibits a broad range of age and it does cover every district, which I think is important. Uh, there are at least two people who uh, report to be BIPOC and uh, it does have this wide range of different kinds of experience. Some not that engaged with town politics and others much more engaged over time. I'm, I actually find this list to be very acceptable. Uh, so for me, I think I get, I get really challenged by assumptions that or when people are making assumptions about how much time someone does or does not have. Uh, we know one aspect about that person's life, and we do not know aspects of other people's lives that might take up their time. We don't know whether they have young kids that need a lot of attention. We don't know whether they have three other jobs. We don't ask those questions. We don't ask exactly how much time do you have in a week. If someone applies for this, it is, in my opinion, under the assumption that they plan to commit fully and do the work. Um, and we may have people drop. I'm not saying that that's not a possibility, but Again, I don't think that unless we are asking that question of every single other person, what other obligations do you have? How much time are you willing to give to this? I don't think that it's fair to prejudge one person on what we perceive to be an, a pressure on their time. So I, I really, I want us to trust that people know themselves when they put their names forward for something like this. And it is not our place to say, you do not have time for this. That's their job. Councilor Ryan? I'm prepared to make a motion. Okay. Um, I move that um, GOL recommend to the town council that they appoint the following individuals to the Charter Review Committee. Andy Churchill, Bernie Point Cooper. Order. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead I had my Martin. hand up and I wanted to discuss. Fine. Um, yeah, we'll have, so there is, it's technically still an opportunity for further discussion after the motion is made and seconded. That's why I didn't pause, Councillor Ryan. Well, I'm perfectly willing to withdraw my motion and, and let Fred Okay, speak. great. No Councillor Ate? Yeah, I wanted to respond to what you said because while I agree with that, I believe we have also asked questions in some other interviews of whether candidates have enough time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Um, and so time is a factor. And I, um, I, I, I think it's a consideration to have. It isn't a consideration that would sway me for the very reasons that you mentioned, but at least it is something. If, if it weren't important, we wouldn't have that as a question that was asked in previous interviews. I hear you, Councillor Ate, and I don't disagree, but we didn't ask it in this. And so we are making an assumption about one person when we don't, when we haven't made that assumption about others with other factors. If we had asked the question, then I think it would be something that's fair for us to then look at and talk about. But we're making an assumption based on one fact that we know about one person. And we're not, we don't have any other information on time pressures from other people. So that's why I don't think that it's a fair consideration in this instance. Um, Councillor Ryan? I'm still prepared to make a motion. Councilor Arte, did you have anything? Does that, does my logic make sense? I, you don't have to agree with it, but am I explaining myself in a way that makes sense? Yes, you have, and I agree with you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Ryan? So I'm prepared to move that uh, GOL recommend to the town council that the following individuals be appointed to the Charter Review Committee. Andy Churchill, Bernie Kubiak, Raphael Rogers, Erica Michelin, Ken LeBlond, Meg Gage, Julian Hines, Dan Muscat, and Marcus Smith. I will second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Uh, yes, I'd like to speak to my motion. Thank you. Go ahead, Councilor Ryan. I'm impressed by this group. I, I actually, all of these individuals could, I think, do an excellent job. Um, I think it's it's it, the challenge here um, is is actually one of of trying to find. A uh, reasonable uh, way to get to nine from the twelve that are here, and I agree um, with Lynn that we have a very diverse group. I mean, given that we're working with twelve people for nine positions, uh, that's it would be nice if we had more folks to work with. But even given that, I think we have a very a rel a very diverse group and with lots of different life experience. And I really look forward to seeing um, what they do. Um, I think they all were well prepared. They gave thoughtful comments, um, and they gave us a lot to chew on. And I guess all I can say to the three uh, who didn't make the cut, um, you know, collectively, they, they garnered three votes total. Um, and that seems to suggest, uh, for whatever reason, that we've got a consensus. And uh, so I feel good about this group, and I am excited to see what they do. Thank you, Councilor Ryan. I'm going to go ahead and call the vote. Uh, Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Lynn Griesmer? Aye. Councilor Ate? Aye. Councillor Ryan? Aye. And I am an aye as well. Thank you again to everyone who put your name forward for this process and uh, congratulations and thank you in advance to the folks who are uh, who have been recommended to the council. Um, Lynn, do we know when the council will take this matter up? Yes, they're taking um, it up on the 17th uh, along with, we hope the finance appointments too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Athena. Note that because the the charge had a term beginning date of April 1, we had also planned to put on the council agenda an amendment to the charge to line the date up with the actual appointment date. So I think the intention was to put the, the appointment start date for July 1. Which is good. It gives people time to be sworn in and find a time to meet. Sounds good. Thank you, Athena, for that reminder. And one other quick note is that um, there are deadlines. I, I, I don't think I was as concerned about this when we had the group starting in April, but there are deadlines for the council to vote to put questions on a ballot in November um, to avoid calling a special election. So I'm going to work with the town clerk and and um, check on those deadlines to see if, if it's useful to have that information when the council votes on the charge. Okay. Thank you. That's all, thanks. Pat? Uh, this is a separate issue. Um, next Thursday, we're gonna be doing the finance applicants, uh, the interviews, and I may not be able to, I, I'm in a panel at Amherst College and I may not be able to attend. So I just wanted to let folks know. Okay. Um, George, Council Ryan? If it's appropriate, uh, also related to next week, can we talk about something related to just process? Is that permissible? Athena, is that okay? If we're talking about 
process. I didn't I didn't know that we were going to talk about it. Since well, I it, mentioned it at the I last. What's your question? Yeah, go ahead. Jay. How are we going to do the interviews? Um, we did them the last time in a serial fashion. And I think, it, well, we can discuss this. I personally felt it worked fine. But since we're dealing with just five individuals, my thought was perhaps it might make sense, especially because we found gaps and some people were there and waiting, right? Mm -hmm. We could do what we just say to everybody, please come at 630 and we will do it as we traditionally do. Um, we can change the order up each time, but so each person, so the same person doesn't begin each question, yeah. but we could do it that way. And then everyone, so Athena had asked, what time should we ask them to be present? And I was going to suggest if it's okay with the rest of the committee, that we ask them all to be president at 6.30 and we do it as we have done in the past, which is around Robin. Athena? Ask um, the applicants to sign up for a specific time. I was hoping not to do that. So you haven't already done it? I haven't done anything. I wanted, oh, okay. to, um, I wanted to hear from my colleagues. No, no, no. I, I was under the impression, George, that you had already asked them for a specific time and that we were going to be no. changing it up on I them. That I, told them I told Sorry. them the date of the meeting. So they okay. meeting up, and I asked them to submit an SOI. I did not do any kind of interview times. I can go back and do that. Um, no, I'm comfortable with your method. I just didn't want to change it on them if you'd already done that. Um, but I'm comfortable with round robin. Lynn? I am comfortable with the round robin in this case because of the number. Yeah, and I think with five people, that's going to be fine. So, George, if you can tell them to be here. Oh, Athena? Finish your thought. If you could tell them to be here at 630, uh, we will be prepared with, uh, I will make a list ahead of time of names, and that way we can cycle through it um, so that I can keep my head on straight about who's answering what question first. Right, just, 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 right. And are we going to rotate the question asking, or are you going to? Sure. I think it works fine, which is the, the the chair asking the questions, as long as she doesn't forget any. Uh, it was one any, time. All, I figured that would happen. That's she forgot the question. Me. You know, that's, that's a technical foul. Tech, okay. Really, truly. I'm I'm on my second yellow card here, y'all. Uh, yeah, you know. Be... Not over your head for, I, I worry. <laughs> but um, no, my, uh, my question was, uh, So I posted the agenda. I had to post it today with the interviews and the SOIs. Um, but I had asked you, Anna, if you intended to do deliberation the same night. And considering that Pat won't be with you, that is um, a question that I thought would be appropriate to bring up now instead of just over email with you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I would like to not do deliberation without Pat unless Pat is saying that she would like us to. Um, but I would, I'd prefer obviously to have the full committee there. How I, you have um, thoughts on this? Is it possible for us to hold off on choosing so and giving me time to watch the interviews? Or, you know, the whole interview. And Athena, would the video be ready so I could do that? Uh, Athena, do you know how long it takes? Yeah, the, the video, the video is usually available. Our recordings available, like you know, within yeah. a few minutes of the end of the meeting. Yeah, the panel and everything that I'm participating in is really important to me. I don't take my council duties lightly, but this is, and I guess, I also feel honestly and truly. Um, trusting of the four of you to work together to to make a decision, um, to make decisions. Um, and I don't feel that about every committee I'm on, but I do about this one right now. Councilor, thank you, Pat. Councilor Ryan. Uh, I hear that and I appreciate it, but I really value Pat's contribution, I think. Um, but it does mean that we would not be able to give the council a recommendation until uh, sometime, I guess, uh, what, in July at that point. Well, our meet next meeting is um you're right, you're right. At the time right um so that i'm not sure how big a deal that is with thincom given the fact that that pretty much the work is done and and they're catching their breath um i'm willing to hear an argument otherwise but i guess my first instinct would be just we'll just be a little late on fincom because i'd like have pat involved i'd like her to have a chance to hear the interviews and uh what she's doing uh is a very important thing and i, I think she should definitely be there 
Um, and I think we can, uh, can we just adjust to that and be just a little late on FinCom? Is that a problem? And if so, why? Uh, any reasons why that's a problem or other comments? Lynn? I don't see any reason that it's a problem. The other possibility is we could shift our meeting till 7.30 that night. I think that we it's going to be simpler to do the deliberation on the 20th if it's not an urgent matter. I think... Are um, we meeting on the 20th? We could. Our calendar has us meeting on the 20th. If yes. we're meeting on the 20th, then it can come to the council on the 24th of June. Oh, we it made it on our calendar. Right. Huh? Yeah, no, that's right. I couldn't, okay. If we're so meeting we on the 20th, then it can come to the council on the 24th. And we could make it just, that could just be the only item of business if we wanted. That's really up on to On the 20th, we've already committed to taking up the AHRA report. Yeah, um, which we need to. We will be doing that as well, because we have yeah. a lot. A lot this of is a whole shift that happened in the calendar, so that... Um, uh, but I feel like um, we should do the FinCom interviews and deliberation on the 20th. So, uh, no, no, no. We're gonna do, it, no, I think we should go ahead and do the interviews gotcha. I'm on, sorry. The, on the 13th. Then you, Pat, have to listen to the tape right. and then we will vote, which won't take that long mm -hmm. on the 20 on the. All right. I'm yeah. chairing quickly and I'm going to put my little scheduling foot down. Um, so we are, that was, that was my, my foot. Um, so we do have a meeting on the 20th. I would like to, we can move deliberation for FinCom to that day, but you all did a great job today. I'd like us to, um, at, the plan initially was to devote that entire meeting to the AHRA report. And I would like to make sure the bulk of that meeting continues to go to the AHRA report. So, um, I'm not going to rush us through deliberation. We will take all the time we need, but I, I ask that people come prepared with your choices, just like we did today. Um, and, and your comments also ready to go, um, as well. We will conduct the interviews on the 13th. George, if you could let them know to be here at 6 30, that would be great. And we will round Robin style it. Um, I will make sure that I have the correct questions and, uh, that we are ready to go. <laughs> Athena, are you able to send a packet to the um, folks? I I'm, I apologize. I haven't been on my email in a couple hours today because um, I was teaching myself how to code. But can you, uh, are you able to send an email to the applicants similar in a similar way that you did for the charter review? Did you the do packet. that? George, oh, did, you, did you send the interview questions and selection guidance and everything to the applicants yet? I haven't done that. I was waiting to find out how we're going to do the interviews. So my plan is uh, tomorrow when I have a few minutes is to send the five of them um, the interview questions, um, the time and the selection guidance. Okay, I, think they've, I think they've been given the selection guidance already, but I'll send it to them again. Yeah, if you can just make that happen. That. I'm sorry. I will make that happen. Um, if I may. Sorry, yeah, I didn't realize. Sorry. Interview, hang on. In advance of the interviews, the committee chair shall distribute to all applicants the adopted interview questions. That needs to go out today. Okay, George, I can do it if you'd like me to. No, I will do it. I will do it. Okay. okay. Um, so if we can send that out and then, yeah, we can tell them get there at 630. Um, we'll round robin style it and then that will be it for that night. Um, and we'll come back together on the 20th to deliberate. Sound good? Okay. Thank you all. So, so oh, Athena. I move to adjourn. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Hand up too. Uh, I think George froze. Oh, no, he unfroze. He put his hand on. Um, Athena, you can go ahead. Say if um if you send out that information, I'll do the same thing that I did for the charter review committee applicants and send out the information about joining the meeting on Zoom and everything. And there was one applicant who is going to be joining by phone. I'm meeting with them tomorrow morning to do a dry run to make sure that they're very comfortable persist participating by phone. And um and I've already let folks know that they can reach out if they have questions. Thank you for doing that. Participating. You're welcome. Thank you, Athena. Appreciate that. Um, okay, uh, Lynn, you had you had started to make a motion. Would you like to make I it? move to adjourn? Thank second. you. I will, all right, Councilor Arte seconds. 
Um, I'm going to call the vote. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Lynn Griesmer. Aye. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Councillor Ate. Aye. And I am an aye as well. Thank you all very much. It is 722 and we are adjourned.